Get ready for success. Leadership Strategies for Women is a show dedicated to providing practical and valuable strategies for emerging women leaders of today. It's your time to get inspired, motivated, and challenged to achieve your vision for success. And now, here's leadership speaker and coach, Ellie Nieves. This is the Leadership Strategies for Women podcast, and I'm your host, Ellie Nieves. I'm the founder and president of Leadership Strategies for Women, where I develop seminars and webinars to help high-achieving women show up, speak up, and step up in their careers. To learn more, please visit my website at leadershipstrategiesforwomen.com, or you can follow the Leadership Strategies for Women page on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Here to talk to us today about professional presence, showing up as your best self is Dale Hisiger. Dale is a coach, thought partner, facilitator, and trainer at Moving Mindsets Forward with Purpose and Positivity, CFIC Consulting, LLC. Dale has spent over 30 years developing individual potential, increasing performance, and facilitating change. She's a licensed counselor and a certified executive coach. She holds a master's degree in counseling psychology, a post-master's certificate in organizational development and change management, and is trained to administer various leadership assessment diagnostic tools. Dale, welcome to the Leadership Strategies for Women podcast. Thank you so much, Ellie. It's great to be here and with your audience. Great. So Dale, tell us a little bit more about you. Tell us about you know, where you're from, your education, family life, any hobbies? Okay. Well, actually, I'm uh, from Long Island. Uh, and I'm coming to you from New York. I haven't moved too far away in Westchester. So I grew up in Long Island and um, was very, very fortunate to be able to take a bachelor's and master's degree in five years. So when I first started as a guidance counselor, I was 22 because I went straight through, uh, including summers and got my, my d degree. And so I really had the opportunity in my 20s, all the way up until I was about 30, to really dive into the human behavior piece of it. And that's when, again, I was a guidance counselor in a high school and was able to then become a staff psychotherapist. And so really came to the corporate world in my early 30s, really steeped in understanding human behavior, motivation, um, lots of practice with the kinds of communication skills that one needs to succeed in um, both the you know, psychological arena, education, uh, you know, corporate, you know, not-for-profit sector. So I, I'm very fortunate in that I had the opportunity to be very deep, deeply trained and received a lot of feedback before my habits got too bad <laughs> as, as, a, as a young woman. That's great. So what ultimately led you to where you are today as a coach and a facilitator? Well, I, I was thinking about that question because you, you did have me re reflect on it. And I might be dating myself, but for those of you who are peanuts uh, aficionados, Charlie Brown, Lucy always had a booth, a, a, a psychiatric booth for five cents. <laughs> the doctor is in. And when I was a little girl, that made a tremendous impression on me. And I think it's because of my natural curiosity and always been interested in why people do what they do. Mm. So, um, and being a, a natural extrovert, I was, I was easy for me to ask questions. However, I do want to preface being able to sit back and listen. That's really in, in terms of the kinds of communication strategies that help anyone succeed in terms of their career that's critical, that ability to sit back and listen. So in looking at what I was good at, that's where the, the whole field of psychology, you know, became apparent to me that that's probably where my, um, my, my best self, you know, would, would spend her, her career. Did not know at the time when I started out as a guidance counselor and then went into uh, being that staff psychotherapist that I would transfer it into the corporate world. But what happened was, um, took a break to have a couple of kids and realized, well, 
I either have to go back and get my PhD or take the skills that I have and transfer them to another arena. And that's where the learning and development space, it was a natural transfer. And that's where I said moving mindsets or, 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 or ideas forward. It's the ability to take an idea, a person, um, you know, a, a process from point A to point B. That's the skill that you really learn in when you learn how to be any kind of facilitator or counselor. What a great skill set to talk about and to develop. Mm -hmm. so, so what are some of the challenges that you faced as you were trying to get ahead in your career? Well, I was born with the volume up. <laughs> 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 I guess you say in temperament, you know, and my whole life is, again, I got some great feedback al along the way in terms of too loud, too fast, too much in your face, take a step back. And so the challenge along my entire career is to really, and I, I think that's when you develop empathy in those listening, is to see how are people reacting to you? You might be excited and passionate about something, but all of a sudden you notice that you're losing someone and you're wondering what's going on. I'm very excited about this. It's because you're overtaking the space. And so knowing how people perceive you is so important in being successful in whatever you do. And I'm just gonna keep going back to that ability to listen, to observe, have some patience, take that step back and get the feedback that you need. And I was very lucky, again, being in the field of psychology, part of my training was continual feedback of how I was coming off to others. So it's risky because you hear things that at times you don't want to hear, but it keeps you in check when you have feedback from people that you trust, whether it's on a personal or professional level. You just lay out an important call to all of us to be self-aware and to be proactive in being self-aware. And one of those ways is to get feedback. So I think that that's um, you know, really great advice. And we also have to be open to that feedback, as you mentioned. Um, yeah, so it's hard. It's hard. It's not always e easy to hear. And that's why going back to those people, starting with people that you trust. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like any skill set that you practice, getting feedback, we can all practice it and you could do it with people that you know, if they say something that you don't like, it, it, it's not going to hurt as much. And then you can increase the risk. It's not like you have to go out immediately and ask someone uh, something that you're uh, someone that you might not trust as much. So it's a gradual building up like any other skill set. So that's a great strategy that you've said has helped you get ahead in your career. Is there, Are there any other strategies that have helped you get ahead? Well, I, I think again, that listening and really t the patience of taking a step back, being empathetic and realizing there's more than one way. And it goes back to certainly in business delegation, being a good delegator, knowing, okay, what's the result that we need to get here on this project, on this process with this team. However, everybody has a little difference in the way they might get to that result and really having the patience to say okay i'm going to trust you because you're a teammate maybe you're my direct report even a manager even if you're managing up i'm going to trust you because i know that you and i both want to achieve the same result and i'm going to trust you to get there the way you you know how unless you want to ask me some questions about how I might have gotten there, but I'm not going to be so, let's say, in your face to say, well, listen, do it my way. That's one way, but there's, you know, that old expression, there's more than one way to skin a cat. It's totally, that's a strategy in terms of delegation and giving the people that you work with and for the opportunity to, to give you the, 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 for you to benefit from their expertise as well. That's great. So tell us about confidence. How does confidence affect your communication style? Well, first of all, I have to say to you that we're not all born with the same 
ability, let's say, to be confident. When I say ability, some people seem to be a little bit more out there than others. However, at the same time, everyone can learn to be confident. It is a learned skill as well. And the more that people study about this, the more that they're seeing that that open mindset is what really builds a lot of confidence. And in terms of communication, you can see or you can hear or you can read when you're writing your emails or you're uh, responding to someone, when you use words like, well, I think, or I'm not an expert, or maybe, or would you like, when you use those kinds of words, you undermine the confidence that you have in yourself and the confidence that other people have in you. So this is the learned behavior. And there's so much written on this. It's easy to go on it, on, you know, to Google it and to really learn more about this, to really think about how am I going to position my words, again, to get the result that I want, but also so people will perceive me in a confident way. So instead of saying something like, well, I think, just say, I believe, fill in the blank, or I'm really not an expert on this. Instead of saying something like that, say, in my experience of doing it, this is what I've learned. So that this way you're presenting your, yourself with, it's kind of with data, right? It's presenting yourself with data versus emotion. And it really is for women in particular, we tend to discount what we know, whereas men somehow, they build the plane as they fly it. For women, we tend to want it, all those nuts and bolts just tied up and then, and then we'll take off. In terms of business and just in life in general, just take off and you, you've got enough to keep the plane in the air. But looking at what are the words that I'm using in my writing and my speech that are almost like distracting people from believing in what I'm saying or what I'm trying to do. That's very impactful. And it's one of those things that we don't necessarily pay a lot of attention to because we use our words all day long and we might not be aware that in certain interactions, especially if we're dealing with top executives at a corporation, how those words can really make that impact on how we're perceived and also on our business results. So thank you for sharing that. So Dale, what is resiliency and how can you develop it? And, and also how does it affect the way that we communicate? Well, being resilient, I mean, there's actually, there's two words here. There's resilience and agility. And those two words together is create a state of being called adaptive capacity. Resilience is how quickly you respond. It's, it's your ability to snap back. So it's not to say that things don't disappoint us, but how long do you sit in that disappointment? That's the resilience, the resiliency. Then the agility is your ability then, once you say, oh, I'm really disappointed about what just happened, allowing yourself that moment, but then being agile on top of that to say, okay, how am I going to move forward to get to the result that I want? And in terms of business, that's what our, 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 our superiors and also our teammates and our direct re reports, that's what people want from us. Not that we shouldn't be vulnerable, not that we shouldn't be human, but how are we going to keep our project, our process, what we need to do, our business moving forward. A short break, like a short, oof, that, that stings, but let's keep going. And that resiliency also affects the confidence because no one expects things not to go wrong, but the expectation that people are going to have is how do you respond when things go wrong? And that's where that resiliency and agility builds the confidence in you and you'll feel it in yourself and others around you. Great advice. So Dale, what is next for you personally? Well, I, I recently left the corporate world and now I, you know, I have my own consulting arm because I really enjoy working with 
people, women, middle management, to build, help people build these skills. And I look at it short term. I'm talking, you know, half a dozen sessions or something, and I, I'm having the conversation. That's why, why I call myself a thought partner, to really understand and help people understand, wow, and catch themselves. How am I, let's say, not doing what I should be doing to build myself, to show up confident, personal, resilient, agile, to show people that, to, that, that I know what I know and to keep myself and others moving in that fo forward direction. So I really enjoy working with, with women on that. I do a lot of volunteer work. I'm a mentor of high school students going back to my, to my guidance counselor roots. I do a lot of work with instructional design. So it's really using the, what I consider my four key competencies of coaching, facilitation, instructional design, and change management strategy to helping moving people and processes forward, paying it forward, you know, for, for you know, the foreseeable future. That's great. So how can our listeners get in touch with you? LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn and you just have to type in my name. You'll find me and message me and I would be happy to have a conversation. Well, Dale, thank you. You've been a wonderful guest and uh, we really appreciate you talking to us about professional presence and how we can show up as our best selves. Thank you so much. And I hope I've showed up as my best self today. You certainly have. And to all of our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, God bless.